Well, hello everyone, it is five o'clock. In the chambers we have Alderman Bourne. Who do we have online? Roberta Fuleke Paneski. All right. Marcus Navalio. And Trey Mitchell. Well, very good. All right. Um, if you will uh, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very good. Present today in the chamber, we have Vicki Schneider, Abby Block, Chad Palaszczuk, Michael Herman, Terry Ahrens, nice to have you, and our trusty technological team. And all you have to tell me is why I can't get into my uh, system here. But in any event, if we could have a motion to approve the minutes of our March 22nd, 2021 meeting. Do I have such a motion? So move, move to approve. And a second? Second. second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Let's move on to 3.1, which is a communication uh, from the Tax Appeals Commission uh, regarding a determination by the State Board of Assessors uh, regarding a claim from Sheboygan Paper Box. Um, Chuck, are you online or do we need to uh, have anyone speak to this? It's pretty straightforward. It looks like uh, Sheboygan Paper Box lost. Um, I don't know if there is a further appeal from that. Um, so uh, without a lawyer's opinion, we will just, uh, I guess I would like a motion to uh, file the uh, communication. Motion to file. And is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. All right, 3.2 is a um, communication from Deb Yokus and Jim Longo regarding property located at 905 South 14th Street and 1333 Maryland Avenue. I know Ms. Yokus uh, spoke at the council meeting last week. Um, Chad, do you wanna take it away? Not really, but um, this is really a matter that, as I understand it, there is a property on 905 um, South 14th Street and Maryland Avenue that has a number of building code violations on it and um, a number. They've paid $55,000 and I believe they owe another $65,000 and they're trying to sell that property. Um, the owner has basically surrendered it for sale um, after a number of building code violations um, were found, he was found guilty on. And the way I understand it is there has been limited dialogue between um, the city attorney's office and the municipal court on trying to settle uh, those citations and trying to move forward. And I, I understand that this body doesn't have the authority that this is a, uh, the authority of the municipal court to forgive um, citations but I think there's, you know, there's additional di dialogue that's happening about trying to uh, be aggressive in these neighborhood revitalization activities and trying to work with people if, even if they, you know, made a mistake and paid a portion of them to try to move on and sell these properties because it benefits all of us to get them out of the hands of uh, absentee landlords. So I know Mr. Wolf would like to mention a few things as well. Chair, is it okay if I yeah, speak? Yeah, go right ahead. Thank you. Um, the spirit of this uh, request and presentation, as you, you may remember in council, was the fact that um, there are some really good landlords and then there's obviously the opposite. This gentleman um, obviously had some problems. Uh, he has paid $53,000 in fines to the city of Sheboygan. And basically things continue to go south for him. Uh, he's had some health issues, and basically what, what's happening is uh, some of these land, um, these owners of properties are, are getting pressure to, you know, fix it, repair it, 
or, or sell it. And I guess what I'm asking the council to think about and the committee is that in, in an effort to help the city in revitalization is that we, we talk with um, the attorney's office as well as our, and, and Chuck is on, okay, perfect. That we talk with uh, the municipal <coughs> court and see if maybe there's some flexibility in our ordinance or maybe there needs to be some adjustment, but in order for us to help some of these properties to close in a quicker fashion, when they literally have paid all of the money that they can and now they're at a point where um, it's either gonna get raised um, or uh, needs to be sold, but there has to be a simpler way to, to come to a resolution without incurring additional cost. So from there I'll pass it on to Chuck and Chuck can give us the legal ease on how certain things happen. Yeah, so this is this is pretty, a pretty simple situation. Um, several months ago, uh, Attorney Hosh uh, sent a letter to uh, the person, uh, Mr. Longo, telling them what they needed to do, uh, and they haven't done it yet. So, and rather than doing what they need to do legally to file a motion to reopen the case, they chose to write a letter to you. Um, the process is very simple. They have a letter from several months ago telling them what to do. They just have not chosen to do it yet. So I think the proper motion would be to file. I have just a couple of questions, um, uh, Chuck. Um, so this property has been uh, up for, it, it, there have been a number of building code violation forfeitures assessed against the property in the past? Right, and right, that, for the past several years, yeah. Okay, and this fellow has paid, has he paid $53,000 in four No. Years? Okay, how much has he paid? I don't have access to, to tips, so I don't know the exact amount that he's paid. Uh, he's been making um, payments on a, on a payment plan, a, a small payment plan. Okay, I guess my concern is um, this, I mean, if people start getting thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on forfeitures for building code violations, there's no money left over to make the repairs. Um, and uh, and I, I totally agree with you, it's inappropriate for the council, from my perspective at least, to be involved in any negotiations with respect to this, but it gets to be self-defeating. <laughs> when, um, I mean, I had somehow the, the, the amount of $53,000 has been batted about. I don't know, Chad, is that correct to the best of your knowledge? Has he already paid 53000 in forfeitures? If that's correct? Okay. Um, pretty so soon there are going to be more forfeitures than the house is worth, <clears throat> and we aren't any farther ahead. Do you see what I'm saying? So, so here's the, the process of, of how that, that works. So he, he has paid a lot of money over the years, although not all of it uh, is related to uh, this particular property. Um, but these do go back to 2008. He's got fines going back to 2008. And typically what happens in these cases is when uh, a defendant uh, uh, has code violations, uh, they first are sent a letter uh, by the code enforcement officer informing them of the code violations and giving them time uh, to fix the problem. Uh, if, they do, if they do not respond uh, and do nothing, uh, that's typically when citations are issued. And then if they don't, don't respond to that, typically, at least when I was prosecuting um, uh, through 2015, typically what would happen is there would be uh, a total of three citations issued um, before they would go to what's called a long form complaint. Uh, and then a long form complaint would issue only if there had been no response whatsoever to the three citations. A long form complaint is typically for a higher amount uh, because it's based on uh, a period of, a per of violations over a longer period of time. Code violations are always subject to be reopened uh, if, the, if the property is fixed or if, if there is a plan. Uh, so the, the 
a, a number of these do date back to when I was prosecuting. I know there was a long form complaint in 2015. So I was, I was still prosecuting up until um, uh, April of 2015. Uh, and typically what would, what would happen at that time, and, and I know that my uh, prosecutor since then have followed the same pr process, uh, is that anybody who decides that at some point they actually do want to talk to uh, a code enforcement officer or to our office about these uh, violations, um, you know, once we try to collect them. Uh, they, they have the ability to do that and we always will reopen a case, but the court, they you know, have to file a motion to reopen that we can't just agree to things without, but without getting the court involved. And so that's where we're at here is there, there after, you know, after a period of however many years it's been since 2008, we finally did get contacted, um, uh, not directly by Mr. Longo, I don't believe, but by, uh, someone affiliated with him. Uh, and uh, uh, Mr. Hosh did uh, send a letter explaining, here's what you need to do, um, file a motion to reopen. We're perfectly willing to negotiate with you uh, in order to get this done. Uh, typically, if he's trying to sell the property, uh, we're, we're basically looking to allow the property to sell. Uh, that's, that's what we want. Uh, we, we don't want properties that are just sitting there. And so all of this, all, all of your concerns are, are part of the, the process. Uh, and uh, it's just, in, unfortunately, in this case, I think we have a, um, you know, I, I don't know what, why they chose to, instead of uh, following the process, they chose to write you a letter, uh, but that's what, what they've chosen to do. Uh, it, as, as soon as they file that motion to reopen so that the property can get sold, it's, it's all going to get taken care of. They just have to do it. Um, okay. So, um but again, my understanding is that the, the forfeiture accumulates, or not the, the potential forfeiture accumulates day by day, every day of the violation. And it's a fairly substantial amount of money. I mean, it's not $20 or anything like that. Is that, do you, do you remember? Right, so there's a, the, what would happen is there would be a long form complaint and I show that there was a long form complaint uh, issued in 2015 uh, for, let me find it here, uh, $33,000. Um, and a, there was a second one that's valued at $8,335.91. Uh, so, and that's, that's the lion's share of what's owed. Obviously, there's a lot of other citations in there as well. Uh, but that's the lion's share. And typically that, that is done as sort of a last resort in hopes of getting people's attention. It also enables us then, uh, should we decide that it's worth our while, we can go to foreclosure if, if we need to do that. In this particular case, it has not been worth our while to go to foreclosure on the, the forfeitures. I don't know in this particular case whether that's because there were other mortgages ahead of us, you know, and, and we're not going to if we're not going to get anything out of it, we're, we're not going to move to foreclosure. Um, but yeah, like, like I said, they just need to come in and, and uh, make the motion to reopen so that we can, so that we can uh, take care of it for them. Yeah, I have I, a question. Okay, go ahead, Bert. Um, Chuck, at any time in this process, does someone pick up the phone and talk to the party? <laughs> I mean, getting a letter is one thing, but if you're not used to legalese, has anybody tried to contact this person with a commentary? And is that part of the process at all? So the inspector uh, does try to contact that person. That's often not possible if the person doesn't respond. Um, but the, I know the inspectors do try to be in contact with people before they're writing citations uh, in hopes that they can avoid writing a citation. Um, once, once they've had citations issued, um, you know, we do try to speak to them at pretrial conferences, um, or, or even, you know, at, if they show up for trial, um, my understanding is in this case, he just never showed up for anything. Uh, so there was, there was no contact because he chose not to have any contact. He chose to just simply get defaulted on this stuff. And so the first contact then was when uh, he called uh, or his representative called 
Attorney Hosh and asked how they can take care of the matters. Uh, and uh, so Attorney Hosh did send a letter in this particular case because they weren't able to make, uh, I think they were playing phone tag because since Attorney Hosh is only in 16 hours a week and every time he would get a call, he wouldn't be in. So rather than waiting for them to keep calling or you know, missing the calls, he sent them a letter explaining what they needed to do. So the person who did contact city council does not count as a contact from that owner. Is that accurate? Well, uh, it, it does. We have to be, we do have to be a little bit careful. Um, you know, when we, we, we will talk to people who sort of represent themselves as trying to help out, uh, we will talk to them. Obviously they're not, in this case, it's not a lawyer. You know, we can't have them sign off on documents. Uh, the owner is the one who actually has to sign off on the documents. Uh, the letter though, uh, in this particular case, the letter uh, dated February 11th that went out uh, did go to both um, uh, the owner of the property as well as the uh, person that he's got as the realtor. Are there any other questions, comments? I think what I would uh, Madam Chair, I have a comment to make on this one. Sure, go ahead. Thank you. Um, being a realtor myself, I've dealt with this on the realty side um, and the city uh, municipal department uh, at the attorney's office, they make it really easy to get through it. It's a time consuming process, but if you follow the directions, it gets done. So if you follow the directions, this can get done. Right, right. And, and I appreciate that. And I appreciate the work of the city attorney's office. I just know that these forfeitures are quite large and they accumulate very quickly and it does become difficult for uh, people who have uh, properties and they can't afford to make the repairs. I do believe truly that the city does try to work with people. There's no question about that. And I don't know why this particular gentleman, you know, has not followed anything. I guess the only thing I would be looking for would be a motion to file, but with the request that um, the uh, the city attorney's office um, indicate uh, to send a letter indicating that the the council um, is not able to take not able and not willing to take any action here, uh, but that uh, we would um, um, ask him to contact the city attorney one more time and see what can be worked out. Chuck, would that be agreeable to you? Yeah, yeah, I mean, they can contact us again, but we're going to just keep telling them the same thing we've sent, told them over and over again, which is file a motion to reopen with the court. That's really all that they need to do. It's, it's, a, it's, it's right. fairly simple, but they do, you know, we can't, we can't just sort of unilaterally once the court's got judgments, um, just, you know, get rid of them. So they, they need to file that motion with the court. And, 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 I, and, done it yet. and I understand that and I appreciate that. But since they came to the council, I think it would be helpful to, <laughs> for, these, for this gentleman one more time for someone to say to him, this is what you need. The common council cannot help you. And what you need to do is yeah. follow the instructions that have been given to you previously, however you want to word it. And I don't know if my fellow council members or committee members are going to want to do that, but um, it seems to me just a way that the parties here can have some sense the due process, that there was some due process for them. So yeah, we'll, we'll send them a letter. We'll, we'll, we'll enclose copies of the previous letters and, and tell them that they can't, uh, you know, that you couldn't do anything because they still have to follow the process of filing the motion with the court. And that would be- And I, is there paperwork involved in filing the motion as in a form? submit this form to the court? The municipal court previously did have such a form. I assume that they still do. It, it's basically a form that you go in and you fill out your name and the case number and it, you know, fairly simple. In the past, in, when I was prosecuting, there was a fee to reopen. I, I don't think Judge Tory charges that fee to reopen. Yeah. I would encourage us to submit the form to them and say, sign this and you can go through the new process. Make, it, make it as simple as possible. The court's got the form, yeah. Yeah, okay. And, and we do need to be careful about practicing. 
who's representing whom, you know, can get a little complicated. But with all of this discussion, and I really appreciate it, um, do we have a motion to file? Madam Chair, I had a couple questions, please. Oh, go ahead, Jim. Thank you. Uh, Chuck, is, uh, Chuck or Chad, has there been an appraisal done on this property? What's the value? <laughs> I'm not aware of an appraisal. Um, the, the value of the property, I, the, I think the best evidence we have of the value of the property is probably whatever the offer to purchase was. And I believe it was somewhere around 25,000. Okay. Uh, and um, do I understand correctly, uh, Chuck, that the, uh, the $8,000 is the total of the, uh, uh, of the for, uh, citations and the rest is all penalty? No, no, no. There is no interest in, in uh, this. The, there's no interest or late payments or anything like that. It's all, it would be all citations. Uh, there were two. The two largest uh, amounts are a thirty-three thousand and an eight thousand dollar long form. The rest of it would be relate would be citations. Uh, you know, no citations are generally five hundred plus costs of six ninety one. And my final question is: uh, Does does the municipal court handle this this uh, large uh, sum of money. I thought they were, you know, more or less like a small claims court. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they can. There, there's no limit on the amount of dollars that they, they can handle. Uh, the, it's basically the limit is the limit that's in the code that you've set. So you've basically said that the forfeitures Need to be between 250 and 750 for these typical build, building code violations. Uh, the court has set a bond schedule of 500 plus costs, and uh, so, and and that's what it is. It's it's just that when you have so many of them, they add up. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll make a motion to file. And with, second. And, and with the additional letter, or just a motion to file. Yes. Yes to the letter. Yes. Okay. All right, does everyone understand the motion? Good, I will take that as an assent. Uh, if there's no further discussion, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. All right, 3.3 um, uh, is a resolution establishing an appropriation in the 2021 budget for grant funds. Uh, a $5,000 grant, as I remember, from the Wisconsin Bureau of Transportation Safety, Bicycle and Pedestrian Enforcement Grant. Do we have uh, such a resolution, a, a motion for such a resolution? So moved. Would there be a second? Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Very good. Uh, 3.4 is a resolution authorizing appropriate city officials to accept a grant from the Department of Interior for fishing access at Kiwanis and Evergreen Parks. And it looks like Chad has already gotten up to the microphone, so take it away. Thank you, Madam Chair. So this document is something we've worked on for six years. So those of you that have been around know we've had multiple discussion over the years on natural resource damage assessment funds as it related to the Sheboygan River restoration project. So after the uh, river was dredged and worked to be cleaned up, the federal government sues the responsible parties and whatever they settle gets put into a fund and, and they disperse it to do projects that enhance the river and provide access for fishing. So we had submitted mm, probably a dozen or so projects and these two uh, projects have come out. Uh, 178,000 of this grant will be used to replace the bridge at Evergreen Park over the Pigeon River um, that DPW is currently working on with, um, uh, to, and it'll have some bump outs for fishing on it. Um, as part of that project. And then 23,000 is to install fishing, additional fishing platforms at Kiwanis Park. Uh, stone, stack stone kind of accesses along the river uh, to allow people to fish um, along that stretch of the city park. So um, it was 196,000, it's coming directly to the city. There's no match requirements, although we will have some match related to uh, time spent at the Department of Public Works. All right. Any questions? Comments? 
I think this is very good news. Um, could we have a motion then to um, approve the um, uh, a motion to allow uh, officials to accept the grant from the Department of Interior? So moved. Second. All right. I know the cross country skiers are gonna be happy, yes, right? Yes, they are. Yes, <laughs> yes. This has been a long time coming, so it's very wonderful. Um, is there any uh, other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Thank you. Um, and I finally got my, <laughs> somehow got myself signed in. Um, so we are now at um, 3.5, which is a resolution approving the fiscal year 2021 one-year annual action plan for the CDBG program submission. Uh, and uh, is that yours, uh, Chad? Yeah, so I'm gonna tag team this. Uh, Abby Block from my office is here with me. She has reviewed and issued the request for proposals for public service agencies as it relates to the Block Grant program. We've been notified by HUD that we're receiving $920,855 for the 2021 block grant program. Um, so in the resolution that's attached that uh, to the documents, there's, I, I've gotten a few questions from uh, committee members about what are we doing here and what are, what is, what is the plan? So here, so just to give you a little bit of refresh, those of you that have been around are aware of this process, but the city can allocate up to 15% of the funds or 138,000 towards public service activities. We issue a request for proposals. Um, people have 30 days to submit an application and then as long as they're an eligible activity of the program that they're uh, providing, they normally receive some portion of the funds. Um, we've gotten requests for 181,000 um, and in the resolution, the first um, block of where it says Salvation Army, SCIO, Shoreline Metro, the numbers in black are what they requested. The numbers in red, where it says uh, 38,595, 74 in 2020, those are the numbers that were allocated to the organization in uh, 2020. So this year, um, with a little bit more money from last year to the tune of about 3,000 additional dollars, there's about 3,500 um, left to be awarded to, to be awarded on top of last year's numbers. So we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. Let me just finish going through the uh, resolution and then we'll come back. So then the next section um, near the bottom of the first page where it says Partners for Community Development, Georgia Avenue Reconstruction, um, those are projects that are already been budgeted. So the plan is to dedicate funding to Partners for Community Development um, typically, we give them 25,000 to administer a home buyer's assistance program. They have requested 35,000 uh, this year. They do not fall, housing activities do not fall into the public service cap or the 15%. Um, and then the G uh, Georgia Ever Reconstruction Project, the council just awarded bids to that. So 350,000 is planned for that. 76,141 for senior center streetscaping and parking lots. So this will be the new senior center at Save-A-Lot for the Department of Public Works to uh, do some improvements to that parking lot and in enhancements with the landscaping. 171,000 is uh, dedicated for program administration and it primarily covers city development, staff, uh, time, wages, and benefits. And then the section 108 payment at 160,000 is to start paying back the loan that we're gonna get later this year with the feds for reconstructing the senior, uh, the save a lot into the senior activity center and our yearly payment is 160,000. So when you add all that up, that gets you to the total of 920,000. What we need from the council, from the committee and from the council is what the final dollar values um, would be for the public service agencies. So I like to refer to Alderman Bourne who says, I remember the years of coming here and getting a big stack of applications and having to go through them. We've really fine tuned the program process um, down to really a number that, you know, I think is there. The, the numbers from last year are very close. The question would be is where would the additional $3,584.74 go? So 
I mean, we can award the same numbers as we did in 2020 and divide the difference up. Um, we've talked about this in house and we, we've heard um, homeless issues is kind of on the rise, unfortunately, in the Sheboygan area. So we didn't know if it made sense to dedicate those funds, uh, those additional funds to the SCIO who hasn't gotten a lot of COVID relief and runs the Bridgeway and Beyond program and the homeless shelter for uh, women and their children. Um, but I guess, you know, that final decision is up to the committee as to the where, where it goes. But, um, or the other option was to give it to Family Service Association and have them um, upgrade, improve their, they, they run a tenant advocacy um, program to help te tenants in landlord tenant situations with resources. One of the recommendations coming out of the housing study, the affordable housing study was to create a tenant resource center. Um, the city doesn't have the manpower to do it, but working with one of our partners like Family Service Association um, could be the possibility. So those are just the general comments. If you've got any other specific questions, Abby's here to answer them as well, but um, it's really the same programs as last year minus Lakeshore Community Health. Lakeshore Community Health Center did not apply this year because I believe they've received other federal funding. Questions for Chad or Abby? Madam Chair, I've got a question. Go ahead. I feel like the last year when we did the same process, there was a organization that wasn't filling out the proper um, uh, metrics uh, to get the money. Um, did, are they still on this list? They are not. It's salvation. It's safe harbor. Thank you. Other questions, comments? I so, have one. Oh, go um, ahead. Uh, the Partners for Community Development requested 35000 and you are talking about giving them 25000 Talk to me about that. Well, if we give them, if yes, we're recommending keeping them status quo as to where they were last year with what we gave them was 25,000. If we give them an additional uh, 10,000, then we have to cut that out of the senior center streetscaping item because we only have so much to go through and the rest of these projects are already budgeted. So we don't have a lot of flexibility in the fact that, um, you know, we were keeping, we've kept them pretty much the same for multiple years, um, as well as the other organizations we thought it was fair. And you didn't want to give them the extra 3,500? Well, we can give them the extra 3,500, but that 3,500 takes us up to the 15% cap, um, which is fine, we, we can do that. It's just that, you know, we're only allocated to give 15% or 138,000 and we the request for the public service is 181,000. So, I mean, it's your decision where you would want to give it. So we're at the point now where um, we will approve the resolution, presumably, um, but we do have this small chunk of change, essentially, that we need uh, kind of on the fly here to determine where it should be allocated. I think that's a fair statement, Chad? That is fair, yes. Okay, and I think what I was hearing from Chad is that SCIO, uh, the Schwinn County Interfaith Organization, <clears throat> which does run Bridgeway, uh, uh, the house and services uh, on the corner of 13th and Geely, um, are addressing uh, homelessness, uh, and I note that their allocation, well, their request is small, as is their allocation. Um, and um, I also note that Family Connections, which is a child care resource and referral agency, is probably providing critical services these days. Um, uh, but with an influx of federal funds for child care, I think it probably is not quite as critical a need. Um, how, how do you all want to do this? Do we want to just go around and try to build a consensus as to where we want this 3500 to go? Does somebody want to make a pitch right out of the out of the out of the box, and 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 we can take it from there? To, tell me what you'd like to do. I'd love to make a pitch. Go ahead. 
Thank you. Um, if we're going to put any extra money anywhere, I think the SAIO is a great place for it. Uh, they are dealing with homelessness right now and finding um, housing has been a, a challenge that I've been seeing in, in the work that I've been doing with United Way. Um, Partners for Community Development is a great program, uh, but that's about keeping people's houses good more than it's about getting people off the street. And I think that's a, a better use of our dollars. Do uh, other, Jim, go ahead. Uh, I would I would second what uh, uh, Marcus said. I think uh, SCIO would be a, a very uh, a very good recipient for the extra money. All right. If if I could just to confirm, so Madam Chair, we just a little bit of background. We've given a number of allocations with COVID dollars. So the Salvation Army has uh, received. They'll receive two additional COVID dollars. They've gotten some funding from Acuity um, plus some other federal grants. Um, Family Service Association has gotten an, alloc an additional allocation in 2020 from the city under COVID-1. Um, the Family Connections Program has not received anything from us, but Lakeshore CAP is administering the uh, Mortgage Assistance and Utility Assistance Program and gotten some dollars there. And then Big Brothers, Big Sisters, did they get, they didn't get anything either. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, the, a number of the agencies have gotten different dollars from the COVID relief fund bills um, f directly from the city. So the you know the two that really haven't is Family Connections Big or the three Family Connections Big Brothers and <coughs> SCIO. But what I did hear was a motion from. I I didn't make a motion. I concurred with with Marcus. Okay. If he would like to make a motion, I would second it. Uh, I'll make the motion to approve uh, the numbers on. This uh, um, this resolution is it? Yes. Yep. This resolution uh, increasing the SAIO by the uh, extra thirty eight hundred dollars that we have available. Second. Right. And that was a second, Jim. Yes. Okay. So we have a motion. I have a question. I have a question. Go ahead. Um, since SCIO requested ten. Do we want to just take them up to 10 and give the rest to family connections? And one of the, and Bert, what I would say in response is, while that's not a bad idea, um, we kind of tend to get down a rabbit hole with these relatively small amounts of money. Um, I agree. And, uh, <laughs> but if, if folks, I mean, if, if, if Marcus is okay with amending his motion and the seconder is okay with it, we can do that. Um, it's all up to you folks, whatever you wanna do. If, if my math is correct, it would be um, additional $1,304 to Family Connections. All right, so the deal is, that, go ahead, whoever spoke. That was me, Marcus Savaglio from the 5th District. Um, I, I think that sounds like a great idea and I'd love to amend my emotion to, uh, to make everybody whole here as much as we can. Second. Well, and, and I think if, if, if the maker of the amendment or of the motion is okay with the amendment as is the seconder, we can just consider it as amended. All right. Or at least that's the rule I'm making up today. Um, and. Uh, <laughs> I do think it's based in Roberts, but who knows. Um, all right, does everyone understand the motion then? So we bring SCIO up to its uh, $10,000 uh, request and award the balance of the um, unassigned money to Family Connection. That is our motion with a second. Is there any other discussion, comments? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Thank you. And Abby, thank you for your work on this as well as Chad. Thank you. All right. Um, we're going on to 3.6, which are claims to be referred to finance and personnel. Um, Chuck, what are we looking for? Just a motion to refer or do you want to discuss anything? There's nothing to discuss. These are all items that just um, are sitting waiting for something to be done with them once we can settle them and they need to go to the new council. So we would like a motion to refer uh, these matters to the 
Finance and Personnel Committee of the New Common Council. So moved. Second. Second. All right. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. All right, we'll move on to 3.7. And again, these are claims to be filed. Chuck, do you want to make any comments? Um, yeah, on, on, on these particular claims, these are ones where uh, we were just sitting waiting for the time to pass uh, before we could uh, file the claims. There was never an actual final claim made. Uh, and so they waited the two years and now they're ready to just be filed. All right. So could we have a motion to file the claims listed in the, in the document? So moved. Second. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Litigation documents to be filed. Chuck? So the, the first set 3.8 is ones to be referred and those are just matters that are open. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, My fault. So we're just referring those so that so that they go to the next council. Okay. My mistake. Sorry. And it's not that I'm anxious to finish. Um, 3.8. <laughs> so we are on 3.8. Do we have a motion to refer those documents to the Finance and Personnel Committee of the New Common Council? So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. All right, now on to 3.9, litigation documents to be filed. Yep, and these are all ones that we've all sort of dealt with already. Um, and just when we looked, we saw that the documents were still hanging out there and need to be filed. These are all on, clo cl on closed litigation. Okay, very good. So these are documents to be filed. Do we have a motion to file? So moved. Second. All right, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Chuck, I assume that our um, various uh, assessment cases are still going on or tax, um, property tax appeals are going on? Right, there are, there are a number of those that are still happening in Walmart and um, the one that were combined with Green Bay and Nina and Plymouth on, yeah. Okay, very good. Mary Lynn? Yes. Uh, before we adjourn, I, I would just like to thank you for chairing this committee and uh, your leadership in chairing this committee over the last few years. It's appreciated. Well, thank you, Jim, and you beat me to it because I was going to just say the very same thing with particular thanks to uh, Todd Wolf, our city administrator, and to Chuck, even though from time to time we've maybe locked horns a little bit, I have personally appreciated your um, decisive uh, uh, and correct advice. Well, I'm gonna assume it's correct. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've debated that. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm really quite sure it was correct. And to all of uh, uh, our committee members, and I just wanted to give a particular shout out to my trusty sidekick, my vice chair, Alderman Jim Boren. You know, Jim, you and I, from time to time, don't particularly agree on substance, but the one thing that I can count on is that you have always done your homework. You have read the documents, you've understood what they've said, and you've had pertinent and uh, responsible questions, and that's really how the process ought to work, and so, my thanks are right back at you. And with that, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. And a second. Second. All in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you. Woo-hoo-hoo. Woo-hoo. Been a pleasure. <laughs>